For decades, Elizabeth Eckford has walked the grounds of Central High School in the shadows. Hi, what are you planning? Hi. I'm planning some lantana. She'll occasionally talk with strangers, but she's always remained modest. Thank you for bringing your talent here. Oh, you're welcome. I enjoy it. Modest of her role in its history. Who are you? I'm, oh, I, I'm, I, you? I'm a local person. Oh, okay. I live here. Uh, you've been to school here, too? Way, way back. Way back when? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Long time ago. Lots of memories, huh? Mm -hmm. A lot of things changed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of things have changed. Yeah. To some, Elizabeth's name may not be familiar, but to many, the lasting image of her on Central's first day of desegregation in 1957 is. I had felt so terribly, terribly alone. At one point, they, they said, get a rope. You know, I was walking, let's lynch her. There was a pack of reporters and photographers in front of me walking backwards and asking me questions. I didn't say anything because I was afraid if I opened my mouth, I would cry in public. It was a fear that consumed Elizabeth for 50 years as she silently battled the demons of PTSD. Talking about the past is a walk through pain. It's, it, 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 it was very, 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 very difficult. The school, that picture, they would elicit panic attacks, anxiety, flashbacks, fears that only began to dissolve. They were very patient with me. Once Elizabeth started sharing her story with students who let her know she wasn't in this alone. And uh, I, I had to come and tell you, say thank you again and again and again. Uh, when I would cry, they waited and gave me a chance to resume. It meant that to them I was a human being. Okay. These days, Elizabeth walks here as a different woman. Any sort of emotions or, or no, feelings? No, no, no. Over, over years, there's no fear left, even in crowded hallways. One who remains modest in her triumph and dedicated in her pursuit to help others. I do point out that they can, they can just reach out to support someone who's being harassed. Just treat that person in a way that you want to be treated. That can be very powerful. It was very powerful for me when it happened. In Little Rock, Arkansas, I'm Dan Grossman reporting.